is a presentation of TFNN. of the Gates Future products that worked perfectly the first time. I had an Altair 8080 and uh, had uh, Microsoft uh, Basic in it and uh, ran a few programs, Lunar Lander and stuff. So it brings back um, eh, good at times. I think mine was in 1977. Now, maybe it took that long to come out. I can't remember now. But I don't think I had my uh, 8080 until or excuse me, my 8800 Altair until 1977. Pretty sure that's when it is. Memory starts playing tricks on you. Telemetry. Ban. Why does it take so long for me to get some of those things out? Probably because I don't sit here and talk all day. I talk about one hour a day, and it's on this show. For the most of it, I grunt and not a lot. And that seems to work well with a girlfriend. Unlike some of Gates' future products, it worked perfectly the first time. I have to almost think, though, uh, that uh, when I was at Comdex and there was, a, there was a time when everything was vaporware and probably the most incredible thing I ever saw, they called Bill Gates a demo god. He was able to go through and uh, show Word several years before it came out although saying it was going to be out in three months and uh, killing lots of sales for a long time for uh, Lotus 1, 2, 3, where everybody thought that the uh, version for Windows would be out. Um, not uncommon. Uh, later on, we would find out uh, by some of the people that were behind the original Office product uh, that uh, the version that he was using had almost 3,000 bugs that would instantly give you the blue screen of death. And he was able to negotiate past all of them. 
And uh, eh, kind of interesting. I always like going by people and booths that either had Macintoshes or had Amiga computers at the uh, at the uh, Comdex. And if you would hold down the Alt key and pull the window and make it smaller, you could literally turn the window kind of inside out, and it would uh, also give you a blue screen of death on the Mac and on the Amiga. And uh, I always like to do that to people who were, were kind of uppity at the uh, trade show. Uh, and uh, just watch their face as they saw the blue screen of death uh, come after them, even off of a PC. But on this day in 1975, uh, uh, Bill Gates and Paul Allen, when he's not mowing over uh, reefs in his 350-foot yacht, uh, were writing the first version of BASIC and delivering it. Interesting, nonetheless. Uh, got some other things before, and we'll try to do this right now. And now, deep insights and random thoughts. Of course, we've got the Hawkeye Cockeye tonight, and that is the caucus. And I've been kind of inundated by people talking about politics. Um, actually, in Silicon Valley, I find it, uh, I tuned into my natural webcasts that have nothing to do with trading and everything to do with what's the inside goings on of Silicon Valley, only to hear them talk the entire one hour show about uh, Donald Trump. And uh, most of these folks are, of course, way, 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 way out there on the left coast. And uh, kind of, uh, I was kind of, in fact, I was kind of glad that Donald Trump's around because, of course, it made these uh, wackos uh, uh, kind of uh, blow up. Uh, but uh, it, uh, to me, it was more interesting uh, as I got into uh, what everybody is forecasting tonight. Think how close it is to actual trading of stocks. That is, you've got a lot of people saying a lot of things. No one knows what happens until everybody shows up. And even some of the people that are actually the best prognosticators of election. I can think of Nate Silver, who, you know, basically uh, hit both the uh, 20, uh, uh, 2008 and 2012 uh, elections uh, pretty much spot on. To see him coming out next week and saying, well, I got no clue, um, kind of lets you know that, yeah, can you predict things about uh, three quarters of the time? I think you can. But like a car race, a car race, a lot of things can happen that no one thinks of in advance. They couldn't have thought of an upstart uh, Donald Trump getting very far. And of course, if you have that stuck in your mind to begin with, it's very hard to make a accurate prediction. Six months later, Nate Silver, um, of course, uh, pretty good prognosticator and kind of the one of the money ball guys that started. Uh, statistics in sports to actually predict the future. But um, how hard is it to actually pick a team or a candidate that you're behind and then get an accurate reading of what's going to happen in the future? Um, politics probably even harder than stocks. Uh, nobody tells the truth over there. Only a few people tell the truth uh, in stocks. Anyway, I just thought it was very interesting kind of the parallels and trying to define what is true, what is not, and what people truly know. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger 
TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, Takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. We were talking on Friday or Thursday, I think last week, about how there's kind of been a sea change, in, at least in the um, part of the content manufacturers of, uh, of uh, movies, TV. And I probably didn't explain it very well, but this is a good illustration of it over the weekend. And the, the, basically the, the discussion was about how everybody was avoiding Apple uh, last week and the week before at a big convention that they have in Miami every year for content creators. And a lot of times you'll find people from the big networks there and they're talking them up and i said you know there's more and more of a drive uh to uh, keep all the cash yourself and i guess i probably didn't explain it as well as i should but uh, literally they want to keep all the money and not uh give it out to everybody else the reason i was saying it is basically apple's running around and offering pennies on the dollar to get access to all these people that they have on iTunes uh, so that they can push out stuff. In fact, Tom O'Brien on Friday's part of our Tech Insider talked about Apple trying to get out there and buy scripts uh, and start producing their own stuff. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we're getting into uh, a lot of these little thiefdoms uh, for the way that uh, video and audio is produced, uh, but mostly video. Uh, audio has pretty much been decimated by Apple's iTunes. Uh, they're making probably one-tenth of the money that they made in uh, before the iPod came out. So uh, nobody really happy uh, about what happened uh, over time. Now, maybe that couldn't have changed anything, but everybody is still blaming Apple, which is all that really matters. Over the weekend, or on Friday, uh, Louis creator, uh, Louis C.K., uh, basically started his own network, I guess, if you want to think of it that way, uh, and launched a, a TV series uh, called Horace and Pete's uh, with Alan Al uh, Alda, Nick DiPaolo. I don't know who A.D. Bryan is. Uh, I know who Al Eddie Falco is. She's the wife on The Sopranos. Uh, Kurt Metzger and Stephen Wright all make appearances in it. Uh, but basically, he stuck it on his website, and you could download it in any format or several formats, for five bucks. 
And Louis figured out that he can make more money or a, and a lot more money without dealing with anybody, uh, just putting it up on his websites. And, of course, uh, for terrestrial audio, we see a lot of people trying to get into that uh, business with the latest shock doc, uh, shock jock on radio. And, and while uh, Howard Stern's decided to stay with Sirius XM Satellite, uh, we see the people actually making the big bucks outside of him uh, with people like Mark Marin in WTF podcast and uh, Al, uh, Adam Carolla with his uh, Carolla Digital uh, Network. A lot of people really getting into to digital and uh, saying, uh, see you later to the people that have been their traditional gatekeepers. Uh, but it's just very interesting to see that I think this is the first time I've seen Louis do, you know, and release comedy specials, stand-up specials that he edits out himself. He figures he made somewhere between two and a half to three times what he would have going through Showtime, Time, HBO, Netflix, or the rest. Uh, but my thesis is that a lot of these people are going to want to keep all the cash and not uh, share with somebody like Apple or any of these others, especially with Apple uh, asking for a huge cut of the pie, uh, when actually a lot of this is getting um, very decentralized. And I think this is probably the best example. Uh, while most people don't have enough people uh, that follow them, uh, there are a few people, uh, like Mike Marin, uh, Adam Carolla financed a movie off his podcast, and, uh, of course, now we see Louis C.K., uh, very interestingly. Can, I don't know if you can say, by putting it on your own website, you've created another network. But, th you know, if you've got talent and people want to see you, they'll come to you. Uh, and uh, even with piracy and everything else, he thinks that this will make him three times more money uh, than uh, farming it out through Netflix or uh, Amazon Prime or the rest. So we continue to see, I think, this theme, which is uh, content creators wanting to keep it all. So maybe that will be it. Uh, yeah, Louis C.K., one's very, pretty good. Uh, Tesla was under pressure this morning and Friday. Uh, kind of interesting to see how this is playing out. But uh, Elon Musk exercised over 500,000 of his options in the company or about $100 million worth at uh, mid-190s price. In the SEC filing, he was basically exercised his options at $6.63 apiece, uh, which would have produced uh, $98 million for M Musk if he had sold the shares, which are currently trading at 191 per share. And uh, doesn't say that he won't sell them, just that he hasn't sold them yet. Uh, and a lot of times what these guys will do is exercise these and then slowly sell them over the next year or so. I'm waiting for that. That's kind of where the pressure on uh, on Stock Friday and into this morning. I think they have earnings out this week, so we will see more of that. But uh, I think a lot of these stocks that have held up higher, uh, do not be surprised to start seeing some of these people uh, exercising their options now uh, as the market starts heading down. Smartphones, uh, of course, we've talked a lot about peak smartphone and Apple, of course, uh, probably hitting its high watermark for uh, smartphone shipping. What is kind of interesting is that uh, actual smartphones uh, as a percentage were up 10% last year. But many more people are buying less expensive smartphones, uh, I guess I did, and didn't go for the premium super phones. And, uh, you know, up 10%, but uh, both Samsung and, uh, of course, uh, Apple uh, lower units and forecasting lower units into next year. But to give you an idea, 400 million smartphones last year, uh, which was an increase of 5.7% percent from the same period a year ago, just in the last quarter of 2015. So uh, they continue to go up, but prices are going down. And uh, that kind of puts us, as we talked to one caller 
I don't know how long ago, maybe a couple, two, three weeks, we talked about the bell curve of technology and how we're kind of on the right side of that bell uh, where the maximum amount of money has probably been made. Uh, and uh, we'll have more and more people buying and less and less profit made. But I uh, just thought it was interesting. Nonetheless, after the bell tonight, we've got Aflac, Alphabet, which is Google. I hate that name. Uh, Anadarko Petroleum Mattel, uh, Tereso. I always want to say Chorizo because one of my writing group guys, they called him the Big Chorizo. Understand a little bit of Spanish lingo there. And Win Resorts. We'll be back in a minute. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Nineteen thirty-five on the S and P cash, which means we're just four points off today. And you've got to think that with crude down, we'd be six uh, percent. It'd be a lot different. Of course, crude was down because, of course, uh, they said uh, we're really not going to have that OPEC meeting after all. Uh, nothing's going to happen. We're going to go west, young man, to Bobby in Greenlee, Colorado. How you doing today, Bobby? Good. Uh, we're supposed to get about eight to ten inches of snow. You know, I had to turn my air on. 
<laughs> really? It's, it's going to be 80 years. <laughs> You're going to make me envious. Uh, I wish I was there. I, I, you know, I, I, got, I, I got sun tea out on the patio brewing today. Really? You lucky yeah. dog. I got to ask you a question. FINRA changed the law on the 26th of January that if you have a trust account and you trade it, you have to go by 15-minute delay. Are you familiar with that rule that went in effect on the 26th of January? 1606? Uh, I don't. I, I thought it was 201.8. Uh, that's a proposal. I'm looking on their website. I went into my trading account, and I play the two-for-ones, and I'm handicapped. And I've talked to you before, David, and I, you know, I sit at a computer and I trade, you know, like the SSO and the SDS and, and the DXD or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and I trade it and now I have to go by 15 minute delays. I mean, 15 that's like minute going delays on for what? Interstate. For your order? Yeah. I mean, I get my information 15 minutes delayed from my account. And so I, I don't know how they can enforce it. What if he just had something else that was real time? Yeah, I mean, it, it's I can't get it. I mean, on the account, uh, it was through Scott Trade. And right. They, yeah. Are you sure that the, the uh, it, uh, that is? I haven't heard of it. The answer is no. I, I actually get all the rules trust. and stuff. It's under trust. It's yeah, under that must must be something different. I didn't even see that. I I'm on the email list for Finra, and I didn't even see it then. Yeah, it's it's a new rule that I, came can, in effect. Are, are they prohibiting you from looking at it, or just uh, prohibiting Scott Trade from giving that data away free? It's no, it's 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 if you have a trust and you're trading that, you have to go by 15 minute delayed figures. That's I don't like know going how they out can on the interstate, that. putting blinders on. And then I say to my co-passenger, "How am I doing? Going 70 miles an hour?" Yeah. I, how many people are trading in a trust, though? I don't know. Yeah. But I. But I, it's not fair. I mean, it's crooked as it is now in the industry because it, they can literally force, you know, the, the, the uh, puts and call options in nanoseconds and cancel the orders. You know are you that. sure if, if you went to another broker that, that they would... Uh... The, the All same thing applies. Are telling me the same thing. If I transfer in and have the name trust, it will be delayed. Eh. Well, I don't know how they can enforce it. All you can need you, to do is get one other me? account that doesn't have a trust in it, and can then you, you have real time quotes. I don't know how they can enforce that. Could are you, you there? Um, and and ask them about that. I mean, that that's crazy. Yeah, what if you see it on uh, what if you see it on CNBC and it's real time? I haven't yeah, seen I don't I don't think that there's any I don't know how that got in there. My guess is that if you dig into the law, it has a lot more to do with whether or not you can get the data for free. They well, may be trying I mean, they I, may be I, trying to push I, people. I, I keep uh, the maximum amount to get why my services are free anyway. Yeah, they may be you doing it mean, to they may be doing it to force people oh. in into uh, data services that are more expensive if they're plus, trading a true trust. I mean, when you're doing two or three trades a day and you have 22 days, I have no problem fulfilling my trade minimum. Yeah. I, oh, so, I, mean, I, bet, uh, I bet if I dig back in here, if yeah, we got I, into I the law. I could address that, and I always listen to you guys, so I'd appreciate it. Okay, I'd have to look in into it a little bit more, but again, like I said, I think when I dig back into it, we're going to find out that they want to sell, that this was probably some kind of deal where they wanted to sell people Bloomberg terminals, and it's just that Scott Trade can't give it to you, that literally, if you want to pay for real-time data, well, I don't like even, I think that... Brokers, they, they're like, you know, two seconds. You know, we're always about two seconds behind. Yeah, I just, it, there's probably more, a lot more to this. I'll look into it. In fact, I'm supposed to talk to the FINRA guys tomorrow on something else, so we'll find out. Really? Do yep. that, and I'll listen to your show. Well, it won't, yeah, okay. I mean, it's not going to be a private conversation, but I've been asking them some questions about some other stuff, and they haven't gotten back to me because I think it would be embarrassing.
So maybe we'll find out. I'll find out tomorrow when I'm supposed to talk to the guy there. Anyway, that you have is, a great day. We'll get into does, other does things. Your, does your uh, assistant have a phone number I could call Fenra? No, I actually email him and he calls me back. Okay. But if All you right, want to I'll... contact him, it's uh, right there. They've got a number. Uh, main I'll, phone I'll, number I'll is 301-590-6500. Okay, I'll, I'll Google them and stuff. All right. It's, yeah, Dwight, it's FINRA.org. Okay, FINRA.org. Okay, thanks. You bet. Anyway, uh, we're going to move on to the things. We're off four points on the S&P cash, 2.75 billion shares. I suspect this is where we're probably going to start seeing the rubber meet the road, and that is resistance. I thought maybe we could make up to uh, 1950, 1975 this month. We may even get a little higher than that. Um, the uh, mood to bottom fish out here has been a little bit bigger. I just thought maybe we'd be kind of in a consolidation range um, that was eh, starting probably here and up to maybe 1980. Maybe that'll still play out. I will be waiting for a great deal of stocks to start hitting confluence levels. Uh, and, uh, in fact, uh, I had, I don't know, 30, 40 pages of stocks uh, today that had fairly decent confluence levels. Uh, on the way up. And of course, these would be targets where we want to actually uh, uh, start looking uh, for resistance levels. And normally when I set these up, what I want to do is start looking out uh, at about two years because this actually gives you a much better indication of what's going on uh, long term. And in fact, Confluence works much better at these two year levels. And of course, uh, Art of the charts is pretty good at doing this automatically. Uh, but uh, I was looking at Yum Brands uh, last night after I got home. Um, I was, oh, I was telling everybody uh, I was on TV for a few minutes yesterday uh, because I was standing next to Denny Hamlin, the NASCAR racer, at the uh, 24 Hours of Daytona. And uh, they kept on saying he was there, and I guess they went back to the videotape. So I guess I was on a bunch of times. I got a bunch of emails from friends who uh, were watching the uh, race from, uh, what was it, 2.30 Saturday all the way to uh, 2.30 on, uh, on Sunday. Anyway, had a good time at it. I uh, got to talk to Danny Hammond, and because I was, and that's the clip where they, I'm on uh, the, uh, in the pits, uh, they kept re-rolling it, so you may occasionally see me in uh, sports stuff over the next day or two. We'll be back in a minute. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. 
If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary Algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, anyway, we're talking about uh, what we are looking for. In fact, somebody asked in the den, uh, would I be a Verizon or uh, a buyer of Verizon? I almost like nothing. In this market, I found one sector that looks like it had bottomed. I bought it. Other than that, everything else is suspect. And I wrote in my newsletter today, um, yeah, can you make some money? Yeah. You can also give it back in a heartbeat because surprises will be to the downside. Unless a stock has tested uh, and come down on the last leg with a great deal less energy and the low was tested by lighter volume, I will not be buying it. Uh, you can all jump right ahead and do so, uh, but I do believe this is a bear market, and uh, for the most part, uh, you will make money until you lose a, a great deal all at one time. The surprises in those stocks will happen to the downside. I don't see much of anything out there. I did buy one stock. It was the only thing I found that the sector and uh, actually the stock uh, were saying that they had bottomed. So not a lot out there. Uh, but uh, I know the lure of uh, playing these bounces is enormous for most traders who cannot ignore it. Uh, but uh, I will only trade a stock in the direction of the strength, and I don't see it. Anyway, we're talking about confluence levels. And this is probably going to be a theme I'm on a great deal of this year if we continue with the bear market that I think is already in progress over most of the NYSC and NASDAQ. Uh, but um, you want these two different uh, Fibonacci ratios to come and see a very narrow range between the uh, 618 and the 382 of the next one. And that's what Yum Brands basically showed. Uh, this thing's coming back up. It did test its previous low on lighter volume, although it did not break that low. It came within about 15 cents of it. Uh, the October low, 66.35. Uh, of course, the January 20th low, 66.48. But 13 million shares to 6 million shares means you're going to bounce. Um, I still think that, especially the stocks that are hypersensitive uh, to China, which this doesn't seem to be today, uh, is still problematic. But uh, I do want to show you, I didn't uh, cherry pick um, a great deal of stocks, uh, and you know, I've got a whole long list of them that were in the newsletter this morning, uh, are telling me where we should probably be planting the flag too short. Uh, but if you want to look at Yum Brands, uh, the first pop off the bottom came up to $76.64. Pretty close. Uh, it was about a buck under where Confluence is. But at that point, you really expect a great deal more after you've come down with such enormous volumes and basically the bounces tend to be less. Uh, if this thing is going to go break out the $66.35 low, uh, it's probably going to bounce back up into that range, and I would like 77 bucks or so and light volume to pull the trigger on it and probably on the next leg down or maybe the 
leg after this, the thing will go down and break the 6635 out of it. But uh, a great example if you're learning confluence levels. As we said before, probably the best way to read about it is uh, Tom O'Brien's book. Uh, you can also go to the original source of it, which was Joe DiNapoli's book. I think his book's 180 bucks, uh, and doesn't include a lot of things like volume. Uh, this one was so narrow um, that uh, you can't even see it. I had to highlight it, but uh, pretty interesting uh, to see that the materials sector, the XLB, uh, has one of the most perfect uh, confluence levels that you can find. And of course, what we want is these things to be just as tight as they can be. This one's two cents. It's so, actually, it's so small, it doesn't even show up hardly unless I zoom in on it. That's two cents on uh, either side of $42.38 and $42.36. And that's exactly what you want to see in these long-term trend charts. Now we're at 39 bucks, so that's saying this thing could bounce back up to three bucks. Now it doesn't mean that it will get there, but it does tell you one very important thing, and that is that if you want the risk reward to be there, that you really need to get rather significant bounces after these things have come down over time. And you know, we look back to what is this, uh, February 25th of 2015, 52 dollars. 22 cents. Now we're, you know, bouncing off this $36.29 low on January 20th. Uh, but, you know, a two or three buck low is not all that big. Now that also kind of sets us back up into this candle back from August 24th that this thing spiked down and through. So remember, this is not a single tool, uh, but it has all the elements, i.e., uh, this thing came up on, on at least my power law vector indicator on a 5, went down on a 6.5. So energy is still to the downside in this stock until anything happens. A lot of these stocks have been uh, severely hammered over time, like Western Digital. Uh, they're starting to get their bounces and short covering off here. Just on short covering and bounces, it would not surprise me to see this stock back up into its confluence range, which is $69.04 back to $70.82. Um, when you look at these, in fact, uh, let's get this cleaned up a little bit here where we can see it a little uh, clearer. Um, when we look at these, uh, again, not all these stocks are going to have confluence levels, but I, you know, I had 50 of them, and I could have probably put in another 100 of them. So the market is got a fairly decent relationship with the previous leg and the current legs down on a longer-term basis. I'm using a two-year chart here for everybody. Uh, to, 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 Joe's Japanese Candlesticks book? No. Uh, Joe DiNapoli had, uh, I think it's fun with, uh, not fun, I think it's... Uh, uh, something uh, trading with DiNapoli levels, I think is the name of it. It's on Amazon uh, or his website, but I think it's 180 bucks. Pretty expensive book. Uh, Tom uh, kind of covers the same thing uh, differently and adds volume to it. I think his book's only 80 bucks. So I would just say, from being a penny pincher myself and also uh, a fan of Tom's work, that you might want to buy Tom's book first, anyway. Um, Western Digital had a nice uh, clip out here, $69.94 to $69.54 on Western Digital. So you can see as this comes back up, this is when the stock really started moving down into the previous low of September 28th at 67.87. It bounced up to 86 bucks, 39 cents, and of course came right back down. So that's going to be a pretty good idea of where these can bounce. And, of course, there's a lot of, of uh, money to be made if it bounced that way. I'm not saying it's bouncing that far. I'm saying that I will be all over it if it does and continues to come up on light volume. So these are where you're going to find your best risk reward and probably the most money to be had. If these things only bust, uh, uh, bounce three bucks and you come back down on a $50 stock on three bucks, 
uh, maybe you just get the three bucks. I would rather see something bounce fairly decently, all the volume come out of it, and know that on the next move down, there's some momentum to blow out the previous lows if I'm going to be short. Anyway, we'll be back in just a minute. O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Uh, what else we have going on here? We've got a couple of requests to wrap the show up for today. Of course, a lot of earnings uh, coming out tonight and through the rest of the week. So uh, uh, stay frosty, as I like to say. Uh, first one was an email. Can you pull your charts up on oil and natural gas? I, I don't see a whole lot other than these things are just bouncing in ABC downs. Uh, I don't see anything really to hang your hat on it. Um, will these things bounce? Uh, yeah, they've bounced before. This is about as uh, the same bounce we had from in UNG from April 27th to uh, May 19th. Yeah, is it a big percentage? If you can catch it, just uh, doesn't seem to last very long. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, most likely you're probably headed back at least to the 691 on UNG. And I think probably the same thing in that in uh, crude. Um, there's just too many people that need to sell crude right now to keep themselves afloat. And uh, especially today, the downside is uh, 
And of course, uh, everybody knows it. They couldn't get anybody to even agree to have a meeting to talk about cutting output production. So I think that says it all. Uh, I want to short MCD. What do you think? Let's take a quick look at uh, McDonald's. Uh, again, I would probably wait until the market tops out. Um, you know, you got a light volume today. I don't know what you'd be looking for, though. You know, 112, 113. So maybe there's a 10% trade in it. Not enough for me. I don't know if you're talking about it making it back to this gap. Let's go back a little bit farther. You got a two gap. I'd be afraid of a three gap play in this thing. You know, you've got one big gap down here from about 88 to 94. The second one from 103 to 110. You've got a couple of nice big gaps. I would be afraid of one more gap up in this. And if you got one more gap up, I would think so. Uh, other than that, there are too many other better stocks out here to short than McDonald's, I would suspect. Um, everybody probably going to want to be in this as a safety stock, like buying Procter & Gamble, like buying alcohol and tobacco stocks. Everybody's going to be in this sector, and uh, you want to short those sectors when we're coming out of a recession, uh, not probably when we're going in. And, uh, you know, if you were going to short these, if McDonald's is doing well, normally you want to short the restaurant chains uh, where people, especially the mid-level chains like Applebee's and, and uh, oh, the other ones where people really start cutting out first is those mid-priced restaurants, not the high end. And uh, they quit going to the high end and they normally go to McDonald's. So in a downtrend, I'm not a big fan of shorting McDonald's. Like I said, one more gap up. Uh, in a three-gap play, maybe I would change that. But right now, everything says uh, stay away from that. Uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, there was one more I wanted to look at in the... Uh, da -da -da, da -da. Oh, instantly got uh, an email bank saying thank you. Da -da 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 -da. Ultra Salon. Uh, you know, there's some of these stocks that haven't cracked yet, and I continue to look at uh, some of these uh, as stocks that conceivably pull back fairly significantly. Um, I kind of starting to look at some of these top out. Uh, Ultra Salon is at least one. Volume's not light enough yet. Maybe one more time to the top. But there's some other stocks up here that have been hanging up the highs that haven't filled yet, and I'm starting to look at those. Uh, this one would say that you may have running room down to 150. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.